Well, it's a joy to be here, and I am excited about this ministry that the Lord opened up about 13 years ago. I just have a, a small part in it, but uh, it is a joy. But this is the area, it's uh, Northern Thailand, mountainous jungle. Uh, and this is a, a village called Planghok, uh, up on the top of a mountain, very, very beautiful. If we were looking off to the west, no, it would be to the east, you're just looking out, I mean, you're up at the top of the mountain, it is a beautiful view. Now, the ministry began, here is Anan Puttaktam, this is his dad, they are Lahu. The Lahu are a Chinese tribal people that came down through the centuries, through Burma, different places now, and only in the, the 20th century, middle 20th century, came into Thailand, but there are hundreds of thousands of Lahu, Aka, Karen, Pelong, Mong, uh, tribal peoples in the mountains, and that's primarily who we're ministering to. And Nan was one of the first to be educated. He, uh, there was no education for the tribal peoples. He made himself a servant. As a boy, he became a servant to a Presbyterian uh, minister in Chiang Mai. He got an education. He learned Thai. He learned uh, Chinese. Went to a Chinese school, and. Uh, he also learned he knew Lisu, so he has Lahu, uh, Chinese, Lisu, Thai, and then he learned English, but he became an engineer. He was the first one to get his engineering degree among the tribal peoples and became a wealthy man. That's one of the buildings he built, and he, uh, but the Lord called him back to his people, and He's as comfortable. He is a friend of the king's daughter, the princess. This is the man 13 years ago, Brother Wayne Camp, and that's his wife, Ruth, that uh, traveled, that had heard of Hanan. They went to Thailand. The Lord had saved him. And not only that, he, he was a man who came to understand the grace of God to some extent, was hungry. So this man and Brother Bill Lee, this is Brother Bill Lee, the two of them traveled to Thailand together. That's his wife, Janice, who is a nurse. And I'll be talking about this a little later. They, they take medicine over for the people. There is no medical help for the tribal peoples in the north. And so, uh, and my wife and I, we're taking loads of vitamins for the orphans uh, when we go at the end of this month. But these two men started. This is a non putaptum and that's his four-wheel truck. Well, he has another one since then. That one has gone kaput. But he travels up through those mountain, I mean, ridiculous roads. But he, uh, as I said, he's as comfortable with the tribal, with the poor, as with the wealthy. Uh, a very gifted man. God has raised him up. Here's a welcome from my wife and I. And there we are with the in the orphanage. And the children lined up and we're getting, getting ready to sing for us. Uh, our ladies made t-shirts for them, and so embroidered some things on there, whatever it's called, and, uh, okay, that thing keeps moving, it? there's some of the girls, and by the way, the ladies didn't take into account, some of these boys weren't so excited, and maybe it was a little bit girly for them, <laughs> the t-shirts, uh, yeah, we made note of that. Okay, I'm going to kind of take you, and here are the two of the orphan girls. Let me tell you something about the orphans in the villages and the tribals. They're more like stray dogs. And when the parents die or if uh, the parents go to prison, and you can go to prison for being a squatter, for cutting down a tree. Uh, trees belong to the king, and you cut down a tree, it's two years in prison. I mean, so many reasons you can go to prison, but... The, the orphans are left out just wandering around the village and people put out scraps for them to eat. Uh, it doesn't get cold. So they just live like a stray dog. So uh, this is one of the reasons for the orphanage is that these children are brought in and uh, fed and clothed and sent to school. This, on uh, Monday, often we go to the prisons. He goes to nine different prisons, Anand does. And there I am. This particular one is in Chiang Rai, which is on the Laotian border. So it's uh, about three or four hours journey. But the queen, uh, the, the, the princess, has 
allow, uh, brought about so that all the prisons are open to Anand, so he can travel, he has open doors to preach. And a lot of the churches have been started as a result of preaching in the prison. The converts go home and tell the people about the Lord, and they, they say, will you come over and preach to our village? And we have, they, they are animates. I'll go ahead and mention what that, and here are several pictures. Here are three of the girls that were converted. Uh, young ladies, they're in their 20s. Uh, I don't want to get to this yet. Uh, you can look at this beautiful scene. But I'll, let me just tell you about animism. Animism, they don't, believe, they don't have a concept of God. What they believe in is they know they're evil spirits. And the evil spirits plague them. So they sin, uh, try to placate the evil spirits by putting food out for them. And they wear strings around. The witch doctor will pray over these strings and say that that'll keep the evil spirits away from you. They name their children things like a pig and dog so that the evil spirits won't know their children. They'll think that they're animals and won't bother them. But that's how they think. It's very... Uh, but the devil is a liar. What a deceiver. And, and, and it's a whole fear. They're kept in fear. But what a glorious thing the gospel is. What good news that there is a God and He made us and... He sent His Son, and there's forgiveness of sins, and there's peace and love and joy, the fruit of the Spirit. Wow. I mean, what a glorious gospel. Now, here's something else every once in a while we get to do on Monday. This is called the Elephant Village, and we did go there. Uh, we went one time. I hope to go again. There's my wife uh, sitting on the knee of an elephant. And this, my wife will be meeting with the ladies on Saturday. She teaches the ladies, and there's so little teaching about the home and what it is to be a wife. The older women are to teach the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children. And so uh, a couple of the men did come in for the picture there, but okay. And here are some of my Bible school students. You say they look young. Yes, they're not. Uh, they're all in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, except for one. There was one teenager. And uh, Bible school, we have a class for six hours a day from 9 to 4 and with the hour break for lunch and we have uh, the uh, hour and a half of English and the purpose in the English is for them, particularly the young ones can learn English and there's nothing written in law at all for them no theology books, not even a good Bible and so the purpose is that they might learn and, and eventually be able to read English and have access to a multitude of good helps so we have English for an hour and a half, and then I teach theology for four and a half hours. Right now I'm teaching words that describe salvation. In three weeks I got through four lessons, so it's very tedious, very intensive, but I, I really enjoy it. And he said, I just got back from a while back from a trip to Chiang Mai. And he said it is one of the wickedest cities in the world. And after he talked to me, I had no clue how wicked and dark this city I was staying in was, and I'll be going back to. But he said it is the pedophile capital of the world, and that men travel from around the world and, and buy children, and there are even large hotels. But let me just tell you that how the view of life among the Buddhists there and among the animists, that the... Uh, Adan was telling me about a man, they were doing construction, and one of the men, this is just the whole view of life. A man uh, fell off scaffolding and died, and someone, uh, an American, commented to the boss about that, this dead man lying there, and he said, well, there are plenty of other guys to work. But life is cheap. You see it in, in how they, they, the travel, the transportation, run over somebody, well, pfft, it's just part of life. And, but children... They look at them as a possession that they can sell and make money on. And it is a grievous and a, a wicked thing. But you know, the gospel is the answer. And for people's hearts to be changed. 